Here's a way to get back at that darn snowplow driver. You always wait till you shovel out your whole driveway before he comes roaring down the street and fills you all back in. Well, no more. I call this a snow blocker. You get a barrel on each side of your driveway, you stick a post in one on the side, and you lay down a half a sheet of plywood on the road, then you're gonna need about a, oh, a 10 foot plank and a chunk of rope to tie the whole unit together. Oh, here comes the snow plow. Let's see this baby in action. Appreciate it. A lot of excitement up at the lines this week. Uh, according to a story in the local paper, the Possum Lake Daily Movement, there's, uh, you know, you know, he's coming to town. The Guinness people, you know, the Guinness uh, World Book of Records. They're they're all coming here and seeing if anybody in the Possum Lake area can uh, set a record, but in a good way for a change. You know, so, of course, all the Possum Lodge members want to get into the book. You know, so I'm saying to them take something that you do now and just expand it to world class proportions, like. Moose Thompson is trying to go the longest without eating a salad. <laughs> so far, he's up to 47 years. <laughs> huh? What do you think, Red? Ever seen anyone do this? Not what? sober. <laughs> well, don't you be snarky just because you've never tried anything like this. Well, if I ever did, I'd probably go with a new plunger. <laughs> What about you, Winston? Uh, you going for a world record or anything? Well, yeah, I plan on getting into this book, but yeah. in a much more subtle way. Oh, yeah? Longest running good mood by anybody in the sewage business? No. <laughs> no, Red, I plan on drinking the most consecutive cups of coffee ever recorded in the history of coffee drinking. <laughs> yeah, I plan on consuming two cups an hour yeah. for 16 hours a day, seven days a week. Wow. Yep. That's a staggering total of 224 cups of coffee in the row. Holy smoke. You know, it may not take you a whole week, because after the third day, you won't have to stop for sleep. <laughs> now, what about you, Red? Isn't there anything you can do to set a world record? Well, I, I could, but that's kind of between Bernice and I. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure they don't have that category. <laughs> oh, no, snoring's in here. Possum Lodge Word Game! <laughs> Today, Edgar K.B. Montrose will be playing for this coupon. Good for a week of old-fashioned fun at Camp Wedgie. <laughs> okay, cover your ears now. Uh, Rhett, cover your... Co Forget about it. Rhett, you have uh, 30 seconds to get Edgar to say this word. Game. Game. Yeah, all right, listen. And go. All right, Edgar, Edgar, this is something that's a whole lot of fun. Oh, blowing up abandoned motorhomes. <laughs> okay, an expression. The name of the... Arresting officer. No, no, no. This is something you do at parties. Oh, avoid eye contact. <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry. This is something you play at parties. Spin the grenade. Okay, you know, every year we have the Possum Lodge picnic and the mayor starts the competition by saying, let the somethings begin. Lawsuits? Come on. <laughs> ten seconds, ten uh, seconds. Uh, Edgar, what do hunters call birds and animals? Entertainment. <laughs> We're just not connecting here. Is it me or is it you? Well, it's not us, Red. It's just dumb game. Hey, there you go. Yes, I understand. Yes, it's all very hush hush, I realize. I know. I all righty. But two o'clock is a good time. If I'm there, I'm there. Okay. What? Not the cop! Yes, okay, bye, Dave. Joe! Joe, I said Joe. Yeah, no, you misheard me. Hi, Alfred. Call him the CIA, Harold. 
No, no. There was invitation to have lunch with a headhunter. What the heck's a headhunter? What you... A headhunter is a person whose job it is to lure employees away from their company, go work at another company. I might get an offer to work at a rival company. Oh, man, Harold. We got companies fighting over guys like you. We're in big trouble. I'm not gonna go. I love working here. They always make me feel so special. It's a wonderful place. All right. Attention, please. Employees of Multicore Inc. and its subsidiaries. Today, a cherished employee. Colin Parr, Emil G. is retiring after 25 <laughs> years with the company. I'm sure I speak for all of us when I say to you, You know, I might go talk to those headhunters just for a little while. <laughs> now, I'm trying to make the show a little more sensitive, so I thought I'd talk about romance. I know some of you guys are starting to squirm, thinking, uh-oh, where are we going with this? Well, don't worry. I've come up with a project that will not only put zing in your love life, it'll hone your fishing skills all at the same time. We're going to make a backyard swing. Huh? Nothing says romance like a backyard swing for two. Well, at least nothing on my show. Okay, first thing you need is the back seat out of a 71 Ford Maverick. That should bring back a few romantic memories right there. All right, now to that, you just add a hunk of chain and a little handyman ingenuity. Hey. Okay, first of all, you want to hang the seat from something solid. Maybe that high tension wire up there. Yeah, that'd work good. And just uh, horse the chain up there. Now, maybe I don't need that much zing in my love life. <laughs> Now, the beauty of this swing is we're not going to have to push it back and forth. We're going to be up there sitting pretty, away from any of the landmines the dog might have left. <laughs> Speaking of the dog, we're going to need some way to power this unit. So what we're going to do is I've already hooked the bungee cord up to the bottom of the seat. Now I hook the other end to something firmly in the ground like this stick. All right, because we want the thing to go to and fro, right? We've taken care of the fro. Now we've got to set up the tube. All right, now to move the swing forward, we need a source of smooth forward power. And for that, we need another piece of rope and a pulley of some kind. Now, if you're lucky, you already have the rear end of an old car sticking out of your lawn somewhere. That's a sign of a true handyman. Nothing says creativity like a lawn full of rusty car parts. Unfortunately, it also says shaky marriage. You see how this works? No matter which way the rope is pulled, eh? The swing moves forward smoothly. Now all we need to do is to add the power. I'm not talking horsepower. I'm talking dog power. Size of the dog is up to you. But Bernice and I, I figure we need about 200 pounds of Rottweiler because I plan to do a fair bit of swinging. Easy, boy. Easy. 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 Let go of Daddy's leg. Let go. Let go. All right. All right. All right. All right. Settle down. Settle down. There. Right now, I'm gonna demonstrate how the whole thing works. Let him stop foaming for a minute. Oh, now we're all set for many a romantic evening with your wife, your dog, while uh, you practice your casting for trout season. <laughs> what could be more romantic than that? So remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Of course, the trick is to snap the steak away from the dog before he gets it locked in his teeth. No, let go, let go, Goliath, let go. Easy, boy. Easy. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. I want to talk to you older guys out there for a minute. You know the expression, don't get mad, get even. Eh? Sounds simple enough, doesn't it? But actually, the difference between getting mad and getting even is about 25 years. <laughs> I don't just mean in prison time. I mean in age, because when you're young, you get mad at everything. School, your parents, your team, your car, everybody else's car. You're spending all your time getting mad, you got no time to get even. And then when you get older, you got the time to get even, you haven't got the energy to get mad. <laughs> so here's what I say you do. You older guys, you've had the time getting mad, now you should focus on getting even. Like as you get older, hey, Maybe some young punk flips you the bird for driving too slow. You can get even by going 100 miles with your left turn signal on. Oh, yeah. Or 
you can uh, get even by ignoring concepts like do not enter <laughs> or first come, first serve. <laughs> yeah, like, that day's coming too, eh? A bunch of us. <laughs> we all up there in years and we show up at the buffet at the same time with the walkers and the oxygen tanks and the <laughs> IVs. And... That's another way to get even, just let your mind drift, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, if you get old enough, you get even just by being alive. <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all getting even together. <laughs> Trying to find some way to get myself into this Guinness Book of Records without making any effort. I, I was hoping there's something that I'm already doing, you know, that would, that, would, uh, that would qualify me. I'm thinking maybe, you know, leader of the world's largest group of losers and wannabes. <laughs> but I have to compete with all the political parties. <laughs> Any sign of the Guinness people read? Boy, my neck is, is killing me. Dalton, you got a bird's nest up there. I know. Can you, can you tell me what kind of bird it is? I think it's a dodo bird. <laughs> oh, do you mean in the nest? Oh. Well, we'll see who's laughing when my name's in the Guinness Book of World Records and you're just a guy in a plaid shirt. Yeah, when that bird gets finished with you, you'll be begging me for this plaid shirt. <laughs> Well, I guess it won't be long now, eh? Won't be long now. The, you know, won't be long. Like, probably later on today or, or maybe early tomorrow morning. You know, the Guinness people will be here, right? Won't be long. How many cups of coffee have you had, Rain Man? Oh, uh, 40, uh, uh, 50, well, it's over 60 anyway. So I'll, well, I'll tell you, strong coffee. <laughs> you know, it is, but it's good. Tasty, very tasty. Yeah, you get used to it, though. You get used to it. Yeah. <laughs> You, you may want to cut back on the caffeine intake there, Winston. You know, it's not worth wrecking your life just to get into the record book. Oh, no, 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 I'm not wrecking my life at all. I'm not wrecking my life, Brad. Gee, what do you think? Don't you worry your pretty little face about that. I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm helping my life. Because I'll tell you what, I'm getting a lot of things done. Sure, I painted the house. Twice. <laughs> okay, first I built the house, then I painted it. Come on, guys, the Guinness people are here. Two million, two million and one, two million and two. Coming, coming, two coming, two coming. Four, you coming, Red? No, no, you guys go ahead. I don't want them to think we're together. <laughs> Welcome to Talking Animals. We're here with uh, local animal control officer, Ed Fridge, brought in something kind of special. Come on up, come on up here, Ed. Okay, 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 yeah, okay. Well, what we have here underneath this cloth is a cage. A strong cage. A really strong cage. And uh, inside the cage yeah. is Weasel. Pardon me? What's that? A Weasel. Oh, great, a Weasel. Okay, well, let's have a look at him. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right, I just got to get the cloth off here. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Easy, settle down, settle down, settle down. Take it easy, take it easy, easy boy, easy, easy. Settle down, settle down. I wouldn't be too close to him if I were you, Red. No, 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 no. He's, he's, he's fine. Come on, uh, get him out of here, will you? We don't have a look at him. Come on. Oh, well, I got some pictures of him. Would that be okay? <laughs> no, that's not okay. We want to have a look, don't we? We want to see what he looks like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think I can do this safely. I'm just gonna offer him this tasty carrot because he's probably hungry. Yeah, look, he bit right through his food dish there. Huh? Yeah. Mm. yeah, you see, there's a lot of um, jaw pressure in a weasel. Oh, yeah? And uh, <laughs> they can bite right through a steel-toed boot. Wow. I know that now. Uh, you know, uh, Ed, maybe, maybe we should just, just leave him in there, okay? Well, what do you say, are you people insisting that you, you have to see this thing? Or No, the no, no, it's okay. Have spoken. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. Because see, once the, the weasel gets his teeth into this carrot, yeah. his jaws will lock, see, oh, and he'll oh. hold on indefinitely. Oh, all right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, he looks Here we go. Oh, 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 no, 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 I don't want to go. No, no, no.
Nobody wants. And then you can just take it out the back and smash her. Oh man, I love that. Got the slings in, you know? I don't want to make it too easy. Make it make it some fun out of it. Now Mike, Mike is a little more direct. You know, he's done time. No, Mike, no, no, no. <laughs> See now that takes the fun out of it. Takes all the fun right out of it. No, no, come on. Do it our way. Come on. <laughs> he's fitting in well. Uh, fellas, look out, look out, look out, look out. There you go. All right, all right. I got a beat on this. Oh man. Oh. oh all right, all right. Um, Okay, I need a, maybe a higher, uh, higher... Uh, no, no, Mike. No, 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 no. That takes the fun, as I say. Wow. What you got there? Is that some sort of a surgical apparatus? Uh... <laughs> oh, no, oh, no, I see. Oh, I see. Okay, this is a super-duper uh, slingshot. Wow, that's the biggest one I've ever seen. All right, so we become the forks. At least that's what I think he said. And uh, he's got a baseball. And let her rip. And... Oh, man, looking good. Look. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. No, let's just go back. I, I, my son, I'll just give a little more juice and, uh, no, Mike, no, 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 no. All right, just a little more. You know what? I think a lot of it is the angle. Get a little more loft on her there and just, oh, boy. Oh, so close. You know, we can move the lamp closer. Maybe that's, uh, maybe that's what to do. Uh, oh, Mike's got, what do you got? Oh, inner tubes. Inner tubes. Where'd you get those, Mike? Oh. <laughs> Ten pin bowling ball, and oh, I see. I'm gonna make a super duper world class <laughs> nuclear slingshot. Inner tubes and a bowl. I got a sports bag there. That's the little holster, so you just pull her back, drop the bowling ball into the sports bag, and yank her back. And uh, oh my golly, oh, my. that lamp doesn't have a chance. Eh? <laughs> okay, okay, Mike, Mike, careful, Mike, careful. Okay, I figure I'll use the board, hit the tree, and maybe I'll get Mike down. Yeah, here he comes. There he goes. Yeah, Mike, yeah, the board did come in handy. Yeah, 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 you're all right. No, you're fine. No, don't, get, no, don't take it out on the... No, come on, Mike. Come on, come on. Oh, my God. For sure. He was even an oddball around here, and that's a challenge. <laughs> Never knew his real name. We called him Brainy. Don't know why. It sure didn't suit him. <laughs> As a kid, Brainy was kind of shy. He liked to hide behind tractors. <laughs> and he got involved in sports, usually as a projectile in a game they called Let's Toss Brainy. <laughs> then, at the age of 14, Brainy Clogfield shocked the whole Possum Lake community when he ran off to join the circus. But I thought circus life would be too rough for Brainy. I'd been a featured performer with Ringling Brothers. I would swallow a sword upside down while traversing the high wire, doing a headstand on a unicycle seat. <laughs> Hardly anybody was doing that back then. I was also courting the bearded lady, but on our third date, she had a very upsetting surprise for me. So I broke it off. I never thought in my wildest dreams that Brainy could survive that environment. So when he turned out to be a slapple, the three-legged clown, <laughs> nobody could believe it. When Brainy realized that being a freak was a brilliant career move, it was a turning point in his life. Pretty soon he bought the old strain mansion and turned it into a museum of bizarre items that he'd collected during his travels as a circus clown. <laughs> Brainy fell out of public favor when he went on just a little bit too far. He made a display which is all about the human reproduction system. He made it out of 700 pounds of cheddar cheese and the hydraulics off a front-end loader. <laughs> yeah, if it wasn't for Brainy Clogfield, I probably wouldn't be here. I remember my parents went to his exhibit on uh, human reproduction, and boy, the penny must have dropped because that was the night I was conceived. <laughs> <laughs> that and my dad bought a front-end loader. <laughs> There was a huge public outcry complaining about the exhibit. They said it was vulgar and obscene and it was killing local cheese sales. <laughs> then one night, Brainy disappeared. Not even a note. 
just his third leg lying on a chair. <laughs> Nobody ever saw Brainy after that. The police had nothing to go on. People had been staring at his third leg for so long, they forgot what his face looked like. <laughs> the APB described him as a two-legged clown who cheats people, and there were just too many suspects. <laughs> well, this story in the paper had the level of accuracy we've become accustomed to around here. Yeah, the Guinness people were here, but not the Book of Records people. The beer people. <laughs> They were actually thinking about putting a brewery in the area, but when they saw the bunch of us standing on one leg juggling hammers, <laughs> they figured maybe adding beer to this community is not such a great idea. Oh, boy, thanks for making a bunch of us look like a bunch of total idiots, Red. <laughs> you have to tell them we were the local chamber of commerce? I thought they'd give us a free case of beer. <laughs> What a great day. Isn't it a fantastic day? Holy cow, do I feel great. Anybody want to go run into Port Asbestos and back three or four times? Hmm? Who's up for it? I hope you stop drinking coffee, Winston. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, done. Yeah. Verboten, not a drop. Yeah. I figure 167 cups, that's plenty. Maybe a little bit too much. Yeah. You know. <laughs> oh, the meeting. The meeting. The meeting sound. Everybody loves a meeting, don't they? Hey, oh, oh, oh. hey Mr. Bear. Oh. My wife was watching, I'd come in straight home after the meeting. I didn't get into the book of records. I guess that means I'm just an average guy, which is a, kind of a sad commentary on the state of average guys these days. <laughs> and to the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, keep your stick on the ice. Everybody, everybody sit down. Come on, take a seat. Sit down, sit, 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 sit down, sit down, sit down. Oh, everybody rise, everybody rise. Quando on, Funk, and Blurman, Blurman, Blurman. Quando on, Funk, and Blurman, Blurman, Sit down. All right. Harry, would you bow your heads for the men's prayer? I'm a man, but I can change if I have to, I guess. I'm a man, but I can change if I have to. If I have to, I guess. I guess. <laughs> Oh, I hope your girlfriend's out of town. <laughs>